It's another day that ends with a Y. That means we have more indie games to cover. This is going to be part six of my favorites of Next Fest of October 2024. So we are almost done with this collection, but it's time for another roundup of my favorite demos. We are starting things off with Stone Machina. This is a open world souls like where you play as a chess pawn who is trying to save the land from what appears to be some kind of evil force using the power of chess. So I believe this game uses the uh, 2024 rule set for chess, which enables you to do parries, combination attacks, as well as uh, repose abilities along those lines. I think that's going to be the future of chess. But this is an action game where the kind of twist of this one is that you'll eventually get access to three other chess pieces that you can transform into during combat. This will affect how you attack and what special abilities and kind of weapon damage that you will do. I really like the look of this one. There are some very interesting environmental and enemy designs to go with our game. Now, an interesting point about Somashia is that there does not appear to be quote unquote experience. Killing enemies does not grant you EXP in this one. Killing them will restore your health meter, but instead you need to find kind of MacGuffins in the world. I believe they're like feathers as well as like another resource that can then be used to apply to your skill tree. And you have a skill tree for each chess piece and abilities I believe are kind of persistent across them. So unlocking a pawn piece, you can use that skill for the bishop and so on. Now, the camera is a little bit on the finicky side. Just like with all these souls like that we played, it does have trouble when there's like a lot of enemies like rushing you or if you're stuck behind like a wall or environmental detail. This one shows promise. While it isn't as I think as smooth as some of the other Souls likes we've played, there's definitely some interest here for a very kind of off the wall or off the chessboard Souls like adventure. So if you really enjoy chess but think that it needed more uh, parry commands and dodge rolling, then definitely give this one a try. We switch from the chessboard to the Colosseum with the Talus. This is a Game Boy kind of inspired and developed RPG where you run teams of gladiators, try and become the best dang manager in the land and become Caesar. But you must deal with rivals, chickens, and more that are standing in your way. The hook of this is that you'll build your team of three gladiators from different classes. Each class will have gear that they prefer to use. You have like a heavy gladiator, light, medium, etc. And then you will take them into combat. The abilities that they can use in combat will be dependent upon the gear that they use as well as their kind of class. Ranking them up is going to be how you level them up and when they hit rank 10, they will get promoted to kind of like the next tier. Now, the challenge here is that besides outfitting your gladiators, the game features darkest dungeon rules that if a character runs out of health, there is a chance that they will be permanently gone. So you must always keep stock of your characters and explore to get new items, new abilities, etc, etc. Now, with this being constrained to kind of a Game Boy interface, of course playing this on keyboard and mouse, or just keyboard, it did feel a little clunky in spots navigating the GUI, but that can just come down to like relearning like the muscle memory and how this game plays. I found this one to be quite charming. I'm interested to see if they can stick the landing of like this kind of like Pokemon-esque combat or this like view of it, but with the greater depth of kind of the gladiator management, the gear, etc. So if you're looking for another party-based RPG and have a soft spot for the Game Boy, then this one should be on your list to check out. We now go to Wild Woods. This is an up to four player kind of cooperative action game, reminding me a little bit of Unrail. It's your job to transport a cart into the mysterious woods where trouble and danger is abound. As with Unrail, your mission is going to be balancing the act of protecting yourself 
protecting the cart and making sure you have enough resources to keep going. You need to collect herbs that will count as your healing, wood that can be used to light kind of the furnace to keep you from freezing during the night, and of course gold to purchase upgrades and additional items. As the path goes, you'll need to decide among your crew which route to take that will determine the difficulty and rewards that you must deal with. Now, from playing the demo of this one, I'm not quite sure there'll be any kind of like meta progression or an actual like quote unquote campaign, or is it just gonna be kind of like individual runs? As with Unreal, I feel like single player wise, it may not have enough of a hook for you to play this by yourself, but this definitely feels like another delightful multiplayer experience. So if you're looking for another party game for you and your friends to play, enjoy, or yell at when everything goes wrong, then I would recommend you check this one out. We now go to a Stratagem Loss. This is a strategy RPG similar to that in the Fire Emblem vein. When nations are at war, it's going to be up to a brave band of soldiers to make their mark and hopefully bring an end to this strife or any other number of endings that go with it. The game features a visual novel style for the cutscenes and story department, and then good old fashioned turn based combat for the fights. I really like the kind of visceralness and art style and aesthetic of the combat. It has that kind of like low frame but more like oomph feel to that of the first Darkest Dungeon. Now, the combat system here is definitely the selling point for Stratagem. Instead of featuring the standard, everyone can either move or attack, and that's your entire turn, every character on the board has stamina points, and you can attack or move as long as you have stamina, allowing you to do, perform multiple attacks or multiple moves. But if you leave stamina available at the end of your turn, you can perform counterattacks when the enemy gets in range. So there's that kind of push and pull between do I go all out, do I save my actions for a counter, and so on and so forth. Now, with the demo, it only featured, I believe, like two maps. This is being played on hard, but not the hardest difficulty. It was kind of hard to tell, I think, just how far they're going to go. Will there be a character promotions, gear, that kind of thing? Or will every character kind of just be kind of set from when they appear in the map? I would recommend this game if you are either a fan of tactical strategy games or a Fire Emblem fan looking for a different take on PC. We now go to Ever Warder. This is a roguelite tower defense game. Your mission here is to collect resources and grow in power in some kind of mysterious void. How these stages work? is that you'll need to collect kind of like this resource that will allow you to unlock different artifacts. The artifacts are your passives for that stage. All the while, you'll use kind of primal energy to build your quote unquote towers. Each tower type corresponds to a different color. So uh, red beats purple, purple beats blue, blue beats red. You can see the little triangle in the bottom left hand corner. Your kind of task is you need to set up towers where they're going to be at their most effective and then start kind of mining out these kinds of like void areas. You need to use crystals to kind of drill in because the void kind of regenerates otherwise. And you're trying to push to find these, uh, I think they're like monumental markers or stills that will unlock the exit gate, which will then of course spawn the boss, which you and your towers must defeat. So the game itself is really about kind of adapting to where things are, what you have access to, etc, etc. After a level win, lose, or draw, you'll be able to use any resources you've gathered to unlock additional features, including upping your base stats, improving the abilities of your towers, unlocking new towers, and all that other really good stuff. Now. With the footage you're seeing, the game is played entirely in real time, but you can kind of slow things down when you go into build mode. This is one of those games that it starts out very simple, but can quickly spiral out of control if you try to drill too much of the map at once and you haven't set up the proper defenses in their respective areas. 
I really enjoy this one, as always a fan of tower defense style games, and the roguelite elements I think fit this one perfectly. This definitely comes with a very easy recommendation from me, and I do want to see this game or play more of it when it is released. So this is a certain must play for the tower defense fans in the audience. We now go to some body horror bullet heaven or RPG with Bio Weaver. In this one, you are trying to stop a kind of biological nightmare that has been unleashed into a lab, and you're going to have to morph your own body in order to do so. The game features kind of like a basic mode and hardcore mode where if you die you restart all the way back to the beginning. The hook here is that you'll build your character slash build out of different body parts as you combine organs, limbs, and other uh, pieces into your body, you'll set like a basic programming flow for how they work. So you need parts that will trigger an organ to the right, organ to the left, as well as parts that will actually attack, defend, etc. You can attach different brains to your character, which operates as kind of additional attacks and come through. Organs can be upgraded, they can be uh, mutated and disassembled to allow you create more stuff. And the game features a progression on unlocking more features, more ways of manipulating your character, etc, etc. It's a very interesting idea for this kind of like action RPG or action roguelite experience. I did have a little bit of trouble understanding why certain limbs and certain appendages were just not working. And you are going to be at the mercy of RNG, especially at the beginning. While you can eventually get enough kind of milled resources to purchase some parts on your own, if you don't get lucky, some of the early play just felt a little bit boring, and I didn't feel like I was able to do much in the game. Still, I really like the idea of this one. So if you don't mind a little body haul to go with your RPGing or action games, then definitely give this one a try. We have even more action with Mother's Sword. This is an action, kind of in like the blasphemous, I'm not quite sure if it's gonna go full Metroidvania vein. Not quite sure what our story is, but you have a sword, I presume it's from your mother, and you have to go hacking and slashing your way across the land. This game is has a very heavy emphasis on parrying and counters as you'll need to properly uh, time your blocks in order to parry enemies. Many of the more advanced enemies have kind of multiple kind of stagger markers. And in order to break their posture, you need to parry multiple times. Once they've been uh, staggered, you can then do increased damage and all that other good stuff. Along the ways, you'll find more gear, spells, etc, etc. Now, from playing this one, I didn't see anything that I would say is like above and beyond or unique for the genre, but it did feel fairly solid to play. Again, this is parry centric. If you don't like a parry based defense system, this is not going to be the game for you. Difficulty felt, I would say, moderate to moderately challenging. You have multiple ways of healing, which does help you. And again, this is just going to be about learning the timings for the enemies and getting those parries in. So if you like what you see for this one, I would give this a try. But if you're not a fan of this style of action gameplay, then this will be one that you can safely ignore. We go to another classic genre, but with platforming this time with Unless. This is 2D platform where you play a girl has to explore a variety of environments collecting berries and feathers. The game features a completely integrated assist mode if you so choose to include it. The bird friend that you can have can act as an additional platform or prevent hazards from hurting you, but it is entirely optional. You can play the game all the way through without it. Our main focus here is on score slash time chasing, as the game will rank you on how fast you complete a level, rewarding you with more berries and the illustrious S rank to go with it. You can also unlock additional levels using these berries. I love the aesthetics and the art style of this one. Some of these backgrounds are just 
phenomenal to look at. As far as gameplay, I didn't see anything that I would say is unusual or different from the genre. This is your kind of good old fashioned 2D platforming. You'll run, you'll jump, you'll wall jump. I was hoping to see I think a little bit more in terms of platforming variety, but the demo does show off a really good foundation. If you're a fan of 2D platforming, especially those that's all about the kind of time trial score chasing or optimization, then definitely give this one a try. We now go from something simple to something a little bit more complicated with Break the Line. This is Tower Defense meets Roguelite slash Puzzle. How this one works is that you'll be able to create or assemble different towers that each one will come with kind of random properties or random abilities and your job is to optimize their position and their utility in order to deal with of course the never ending or well kind of ending waves of enemies trying to get to your castle. The kind of hook of this one is the multiple forms of progression and systems that you'll be making use of. As you play through the campaign, you'll unlock additional features such as being able to equip gear onto various towers, being able to upgrade towers, unlock new ones, and get additional functionality and powers as well. When you play through on the campaign, the towers and the respective upgrades you can choose from when you kind of do like a level up or a purchase are randomized. So it really does come down to, again, like rolling with the punches and figuring out what it is you're trying to do or succeed using these towers and abilities. This one is definitely not going to be for everyone. And it does feel, I think, a little bit more puzzle-like than a full-on tower defense in places. As if you only have access to, let's say, close-range towers, well then, that kind of answered the question of how you're going to build your strategy for this run. But I still found this one to be very charming, and it looks like there's going to be a multiple layers of systems and strategies for you to work out in the finished game. So if you don't mind a bit of complexity to go with your defending and towers, I would give this one a try. We now go to Heritage A Dragon's Tale. This is 2D action adventure that plays or feels similar to that of Zelda 2. Yes, that one. You'll explore the land, completing stages, collecting gold, trying to find upgrades and more. But with the twist, that killing enemies will reward you with experience. And when you level up, you can apply to your attack, magic, or health points. The world map is, well, straight out of Zelda as you'll maneuver around trying to dodge those nasty encounters and find these secrets and your next area to go to. This one is fairly interesting. In terms of the general kind of combat and play, again, it's going to be kind of like your basic style. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Shovel Knight in that respect, but the kind of action RPG elements do make it feel a bit different. I do like exploring the world and the fact that the game is kind enough to give you fast travel to all the major areas. Now, some of it can be a little bit on the tricky side. When you die, you do lose out on your experience as well as your gold. And yes, there are plenty of death pits to be had. Still, I would say this is a very charming game, and if you're a fan of some good old 2D platforming, and you weren't completely put off by kind of like the Zelda style of RPG upgrades and progression on top of that, then definitely give this one a try. And lastly for today's showcase is Vin Defiant. This is a kind of puzzle or adventure platforming style game. When you are fired from your job, you gain, well, demon powers, and you decide to take it out on everyone standing in your way. You are definitely playing the bad guy here, as you'll tendril and skulk around the office, trying to make progress, deal with everyone, and of course, try to take out your boss as well. Now, from the demo, it did feel a little bit weird moving around. Like, someone's had issues where, like, my tentacles or tendrils just, like, disappeared. And I had to kind of, like, dash to get them to come back. But this one definitely makes great use of kind of, like, the physics and the, well, just bashing and destroying everything that gets in your way. It's hard to tell how advanced the main game is going to get in terms of difficulty and additional things will need to balance. 
but there's definitely charm here being the bad guy, and doing what you can to, well, just cause as much destruction as possible. So you don't mind a little bit of evil to go with your platforming, then give this one a try. And with that, we are done with another night. There should be at least two more parts coming, and then we are done with Next Fest at least until 2025. You'll find links to all the games down below, and let me know what you think about them as well. So, thanks again for tuning in, and see everyone for the next Next Fest video. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the video, do the YouTubing stuff. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon, and if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my game design books.